All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from North Carolina by Eric Gruber. How are you doing, Eric? Good, and yourself? Oh, I'm doing great, Eric. And Eric is the CEO of Personal ABM, helps go-to-market teams accelerate accounts to revenue at uh, at higher ACV, a key struggle for many ABM programs, according to reports by CMO Council and Momentum ITSMA. With our, Eric's uh, account-based go-to-market approach, clients have reversed no positions with enterprises like UPS, re-engaged and closed accounts that went dark, like Bank of America and increased enterprise win rates by 200% and doubled their ACV. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is what is the what is the kind of account based enablement that sales teams should be asking for so that they can improve their interactions and deliver the right account experiences? So um, first, um, let, let's bottom line it a little bit, Eric. Uh, even to this day, I still think that not everybody totally understands what ABM actually is. So do you want to just uh, give us a quick definition? Yep, definitely. Most teams think. ABM is better targeting. And all they're doing is doing account-based demand gen. When mm -hmm. ABM, ABX, or however acronym you want to use, um, it's really about improving the account experience and the interactions that sales, marketing, customer success and any customer facing team has and the account experiences they're delivering to high value accounts that could provide the greatest revenue growth in the long term mm -hmm. and that's where most teams are missing because they're focusing on oh let's go after the list and icp and aligned list Sales is going to do these activities. Marketing is going to do these activities, but they haven't assessed what is that state of the go-to-market? Mm -hmm. Where are the challenges that marketing, sales, and customer success teams are having? How do we need to change those interactions? Because it's not a sales problem. It's mm -hmm. not a marketing problem. It's not a customer success problem that teams have. It's a go-to-market problem as one experience that one team provides will impact the experiences that another team provides. Mm -hmm. And it will impact that overall account experience and the overall customer experience. Yeah. So that to me is what ABM really is. It's improving interactions, whether it's social, digital, email, live conversations, and the experiences that need to be delivered. Mm -hmm. So, in in order to in order to achieve that, then obviously, as you said, you have to have the go to market strategy. But you have to kind of move beyond this idea that, uh, as you said, that accounts are demarked. It's like, yeah, if they've got an issue with your technology or service, they go to customer service they get have one experience there. If there's something else, they go there, and then they're just viewed purely by the sales team purely is, are they a solid renewal or do they have a potential for maybe expanding a little? But it, it doesn't often really go go beyond that. No, definitely it doesn't. It's not where it's integrated. And that to me is what we need to really focus on is how are we going to have that middle layer? And that's why I call the enablement layer that mm -hmm. integrates the three teams to work together where we are identifying, number one, where are the challenges? Why are we getting accounts in the pipeline, but then seeing accounts going dark? What is mm -hmm. happening? Mm -hmm. Or why are we unable to go up market? Why do we have deal sizes at 100,000 and below, but we're struggling to go higher? Or why are we seeing churn? 
Why mm -hmm. aren't we keeping our high value accounts? Or why aren't we able to drive that engagement? So it's looking to see what is actually happening and then seeing how do we need to change that experience as a team? And when mm -hmm. I say one experience impacts another, yeah. let me give you an example. I was working with a supply chain technology on the freight intelligence side. <clears throat> now, freight intelligence, they were automatically targeting transportation managers. Mm -hmm. And all the content was focused on transportation managers. They weren't able to get the chief supply chain officers, the VPs of supply chain. And it's because they weren't embedding their solution and showing here's how freight intelligence should be impacting strategic decisions, including mm -hmm. allo inventory allocation. Where should we be putting our products and sending our products? How should we be redistributing our products based on the rate analytics, the predictive rate analytics for the inbound, the outbound, and matching that with demand forecasting? How mm -hmm. should it be impacting pricing decisions? How it should be part of your scenario planning? Mm -hmm. And because they just focused on the transportation managers, yep. if they didn't move forward, well, that's what sales was responding just to their needs. Mm -hmm. This is what the transportation manager is saying. Now, if they did get the deal, and many times they were losing deals to suites like E2 Open that automatically aired freight intelligence, even though it's mm -hmm. not the same level. Sure. to their solutions for free, or they're using freight waves and others that have a lower uh, value on their intelligence, yeah. but has a much lower price tag. But if they did win, what was happening is that the customer success teams just responded to what sales was talking to. And they weren't, again, getting adoption across the organization. And because they were focused on that transportation managers, it was used maybe a couple times a year. Mm -hmm. Now, with the industry turning, right, CFOs, they start looking at their tech investments. Yeah. It's not a nice, to, it's not a must have. They're mm -hmm. nice to have if it's used every once in a while. It's because this different this role was having it. Well, now they're going to be looking at lower cost alternatives, yeah. seeing what how can we get rid of this other cost because it's not a must have. And they were seeing churn. So that's mm -hmm. where I mean that one experience, right? Marketing is focused on the benefits of the transportation manager, yeah. but they weren't showing how it impacts the complete organization. They weren't showing use cases and how it can play a stronger role in strategic priorities of a larger organization versus just that department. Yeah. So it impacted marketing, sales, and customer success. So that's just an example, but it shows that complete overall experience of how one affects the other. Yeah, because um, let's let's face it, Eric. I mean, we tend to do go through this process of like identifying our ideal customer profile, right? And it's usually, you know, relatively, it's relatively generic. Um, but we don't we don't go down any more layers and start like identifying. Okay, what does the ideal account look like? What are all the pieces of it? How could we, you know, what are the different things that we could do? So therefore, when we do engage with our best customers we still see them in a, in our very narrow icp as opposed of, opposed to looking at them a little bit more holistically yes and it even starts with their own existing accounts right we don't customers don't segment their existing customers mm -hmm. if they segment it it's based on revenue now versus the revenue in the longest term which companies are giving the longest term revenue which terms which companies are giving or getting that greatest value from their solutions. Now, mm -hmm. what are their characteristics like? What is 
for example, number one, their maturity. For that client I was just talking about, mm -hmm. the French uh, intelligence, right? If they were targeting uh, stage one or stage two supply chain organizations based on the Garner um, mm -hmm. maturity model, yeah. well, then it's siloed. It's automatically going to be with the transportation only. It's not going to be affecting the others. So yeah, what is that characteristic? What is their maturity model like? What mm -hmm. is that organization like? What are their, what should disqualify accounts? A lot of times companies look to qualify, but I'm looking at what should disqualify them because if I'm going to put time, focus and resources, then I'm going to put that on the best accounts that are most likely to win. I'm going mm -hmm. to look at the strategic priorities of those key accounts. And then I'm going to be looking for accounts that are like that. See, a lot of times companies will look at intent. Yep. But a lot of it is intent to learn, mm. not intent to buy. We, a lot of times sales and marketing teams will respond to intent data mm. versus doing the account intelligence and aligning with where that organization is looking to go. Why is their intent in the first place? Now, if they are an ICP, if we really define that well, now we're seeing, looking to make sure, are they in the uh, tier one ICP account? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to be looking for, do they match a problem profile? And then next I'm going to make sure, do we have a relevant differentiated story to tell them? Yeah. And last thing I'm looking for is, do they have a strategic priority in place that we can play a role in? Because and corporate visions had a study on this. The greatest predictor of accounts moving to close are those that have a strategic priority in place mm -hmm. and match a problem profile. Because no one wakes up in the morning saying, let me just add another priority to my right to Ever. my uh, list of things to do, my list of 900,000 things that need to get done. Mm -hmm. And it's not just react and responding to pain points. It is actually showing here's where you're going. You're looking to go. This is where you're focused. Here's where you're investing, but here's where the gaps are. Here's where it's going to impact your strategic priority. Here's where it's going to impact the different divisions across your organization. Mm -hmm. So now it's about the gaps, the business problem, and the impacts, and that's where teams don't go to and align. And that's yeah. where content, because most content is personas. Most sales messaging and outreach is persona uh, based. They may have some things on the company, mm -hmm. but the messaging, the content, those interactions are not really centered on that target account and the buyers in that account. They're mm -hmm. not fo they're focused on, well, what's your pain points? But mm -hmm. if it's not aligned with where they're looking to go in that strategic priority, it's not gonna move forward. Yeah. So where are they looking to go? What is in their product map and their solution map? Where are they investing? What is actually happening? And then showing you the role you can play. And yeah. that's what's missing. And what you were saying earlier, the other part of it, too, is uh, is the going dark piece, right? Because in order to do the things that you're talking about, you know, you can do an amount of, of research and investigation, but you also need to build relationships with multiple people in the organization. Uh, and and oftentimes you do hear people complaining about, oh, I am, you know, I had great conversations, but this has gone dark or I can't even exist. Even people with existing customers who are paying them can't get them to return a call because, you know, it's not a priority, as you said earlier. So what are some of the things you can do in order to get your account engaged so that you can have some of these deeper conversations? That is where everything should be guided through proper account intelligence. It goes beyond that intent data where I'm seeing where they're looking to go. I had a client, Unifor, in the conversational AI space. Now they have $500,000 deal sizes and they target accounts like Bank of America. Mm -hmm. Now Bank of America had has 90 
plus people working on their Erica self-serve platform. Mm -hmm. So th they have so many different, so many different patents. And as I said, intent data is intent, a lot of that is intent to learn. And uh, they kept pushing out this thought leadership based on the industry, based on conversational AI. And yes, Bank of America was engaging at first. Mm -hmm. But then when sales got involved, it went dark. Why? Because they continued to push out the thought leadership versus providing content messaging that goes in line with what Bank of America is looking for, right? They weren't telling Bank of America's story. Now, mm. when we did the research, we found out, yes, Bank of America has their self-serve platform. They have 90 plus people, so many different uh, right. AI patterns. They've also invested in voice of the customer research. They've also invested in virtual reality to train their agents. But everything is in siloed. Yeah. So they didn't have any streamline between the digital, the, the self-serve, and the agent. Now they're training, well, they may be training their agents, but what happens after the training? How do I make sure that that training is actually being used? How do I make sure now that we're getting feedback and we've invested a lot in the feedback? How does it get back to make sure that it's being used within the digital platform, within a within one of the agent's conversations. So that's where it was coming to play. It's well, we show them here's where the gaps are. We see that you're doing what you're looking to do, but everything is siloed. Mm -hmm. We don't have this agent and the digital working together. We don't have it where your voice of the customer and your virtual reality training is actually making sure that you're improving that agent experience and the contact experiment the customer experience yeah and that's where it needed to come is i just understand where you're looking to go but this is where the problems lie and when you understand the account and you start having content that speaks to that account story and we have messaging and outreach and the right interactions that's when you start to move things forward because then you're aligning with them. You're not having the same content, the same information, the same conversations that everyone else is having. Yeah. It's a better understanding. And that's where to me the enablement because you have the account intelligence, you have content for specific conversations that sales needs to have. Not awareness, which is important mm. because you need to build a pipeline, but it's, what is the content that we need to reframe specific thoughts and ideas? What mm -hmm. is the content that we need to bring different people together within our target accounts? Mm -hmm. Because sales and marketing, they may be having their interactions, but there's conversations that's happening behind those closed doors. Well, how can we help each of those key decision makers understand their specific gaps? and understand the impact on them and their strategic priorities so mm -hmm. they can come together. It's that type of content that is missing. Right? We all put up these yep. mini landing pages and mini sites, but if you look at most of them, the it's the logos that the website may look like it speaks to them, mm -hmm. but then there's general content. Yeah. Nothing to bring teams together. Nothing that tells them their story that shows them, I understand you. Yeah. And now, especially when budgets are being cut, it's that understanding part that is going to play that important role. And that's yeah. where I say there needs to be that middle layer. Because product marketing, they create those uh, value propositions. But it's overall. Yeah. Sales enablement helps with different conversations, different issues, mm -hmm. but overall. Yeah. We need something to connect the dots with very specific accounts that we need to win, that we need to protect, that we need to expand.
Yeah. And and to be honest, Erica, it just in, in closing here, we have all the tools available to us today to be able to do this. It's not a heavy lift the way it used to be. It's more about what you've been talking about. It is the will to bring all the teams together and focus. Yes, yeah. definitely. And that's where it's like we need that layer. It needs to have someone or a company like personal ABM that plays that middle wall between that sales marketing and customer success, where we're going at it as one team, yeah. where we're looking and seeing through RevOps, because RevOps should have that mm -hmm. data. Here's what is happening. Here's where we're losing. Here's where we are winning. Now, how does marketing need to change? How does sales need to change their interactions? How does customer success need to change? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we have a changed account experience across the board, but that's where teams don't look. We need mm -hmm. to look before we even do the ICP, before sales thinks about their target list. It's more yeah. about, well, what's going on right now? How do we need to change what is happening and bringing those teams together to make that change? Yeah. Because sales can't change their conversations. Yeah. Exactly. It's my belief you can't change sales. Sales, if you have a transactional sales team and yeah, you're looking yeah. to go strategic, you can't do that without marketing making the lead. Yeah, you can't yeah. do that without having the right stories, the right content, the right messaging for a strategic sale. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. still keep up with that same relationship, no matter how much we say yeah. we want to change. There no. isn't gonna be until all teams make that change. Yeah, it is because it's the same old story about, you know, it always defaults to, you know, the chain's only as good as its weakest link. So everybody has to be performing. Listen, Eric, this has been fascinating. Um, such great information. All of Eric's information, press information will be below this video. Before we go, Eric, please do tell people a little bit more about you and personal ABM. Sure. Personal ABM is an account-based marketing and sales firm that, as you mentioned before, we focus on that account experience. How do we need to change? So we're not just doing better targeting. It's how are we going to get accounts to revenue at a higher ACV? And how are we going to get existing accounts to greater revenue growth? Mm -hmm. So instead of which most teams go for, let's scale. And all they're doing is scaling bad processes and interactions. Yeah. It's about getting that right foundation, getting the right experience created first and then scaling it from there and that's how we get our clients to faster revenue growth because we're building them the right foundation absolutely i do have like you having a podcast we do have a podcast called abm done right you can find everything at personalabm.com Excellent. Uh, well, listen, um, thanks again, Eric. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will talk to you all again very soon. Thank you.